Hi everybody, this is Bram, again uh, speaking from uh, the train wagon in the Netherlands, uh, where there is an event uh, of supply chain media uh, on how to innovate in supply chains. And uh, from this location I want to come back to a second thought as a follow-up to the Gartner US uh, conference uh, last week, where there was a lot of talking about supply chain ecosystems. And uh, in a previous uh, vlog we discussed uh, or we analyzed the question like if you look at the ecosystem should the different partners in the ecosystem follow the same strategy yes or no the answer to that question was well uh, not uh, fully yeah? um, even if you are a product leader you may benefit for some of the commodities going into your product from lowest price players and some of your customers might not necessarily buy based on the highest specification but simply buy from you when the price is good and um, the conclusion was that uh, so not all of the partners in your supply chain ecosystem will follow the same strategy but typically uh, yeah, that supplier who delivers a, a key innovation to you and that customer who appreciates a, a key innovation and knows how to drive value from that uh, you will certainly have stronger ties with these partners in your supply chain ecosystem so in general the conclusion was in the ecosystem there is different strategies both on the supplier and the customer side and um, those key partners in your ecosystem will typically follow uh, the same strategy a second uh, thing we wanted to analyze uh, today is how does that relate to the supply chain triangle and uh, if we remember that in the supply chain triangle it's about optimizing the balance between service uh, cost and cash uh, let us say and that translates into the return on capital employed because if service is the driver for top line then service and cost combine into EBIT and EBIT uh, over the capital employed is in fact the return on capital employed that's the bank for the buck that we try to optimize how does apply uh, how does that principle apply uh, in that supply chain ecosystem well, first of all, remember that within company boundaries, we see that companies struggle, that uh, salespeople are primarily top-line oriented. Uh, if I'm in purchasing, maybe I want to source in the Far East to lower my cost, but I ignore the effect on inventory, working capital, which is part of the capital employed. So we see that companies really struggle with balance within that supply chain triangle. And uh, we see the same across uh, company boundaries. Eh? Uh, to just uh, give a couple of examples well for sure uh, we know that uh, a lot of companies have reduced their working capital by simply increasing the payment terms towards key suppliers and uh, that's optimizing your own uh, supply chain triangle really to the expense of the supply chain triangle of a key supplier so as companies struggle with balancing that triangle within company boundaries we are also quite certain that there is a big struggle uh, to, to, to balance the triangle across uh, company boundaries. It's even more complex because uh, within company boundaries, well, your own return on capital employed is actually your own P&L and your own balance sheet. So it's your own financial numbers. If you need to balance across uh, company boundaries, uh, then it's even more difficult because you you're talking about two P&Ls and two balance sheets and uh, two different types of shareholders uh, so that certainly complicates uh, the question uh, is it possible and how uh, could it be done well it's certainly possible we know for a long time that collaboration in the supply chain across uh, the different steps in that supply chain uh, can help to uh, improve the the overall service and the service in the supply chain is really the service towards the final customer it can help to lower the overall cost and it can help to lower the, lower the overall capital employed within that supply chain uh, network or ecosystem. And uh, there, there is examples uh, like I know that vendor managed inventory, well today my customer is ordering uh, on me without necessarily delivering me a forecast of what he is going to order. So there's a lot, a lot, lot of uncertainty on my side. Uh, if I want to give a good service, I will need to keep a high safety stock on my side. And if you look at VMI, well, I say, well, in, in, instead of basing my forecast on his ordering pattern, um, if I know how he is using the product or what is his sellout uh, of the product, 
that pattern will typically be more stable it will deliver a more accurate forecast and um, if instead of measuring the service from me towards him uh, we measure the service towards the end customer and we kind of let go of the intermediate service level between me uh, and uh, uh, let us say my uh, customer not the final customer uh, that also gives opportunities to optimize the cost because if i don't necessarily need to deliver on day two with a 95 or 98 percent reliability but the most important thing becomes that my customer always has stock to serve his customer then for sure uh, let's say relaxing that constraint gives optimization potential for me to let's say better synchronize the deliveries to my production of better consolidate uh, orders into uh, certain shipments uh, in my transport planning so i'm quite sure that this type of vmi collaboration uh, will improve the service towards the end customer in the supply chain it will help me to lower transportation and potentially production costs because i don't need to say ad hoc turn around my production because of unexpected orders and it will for sure also lower the overall inventory uh, in that supply chain so if we want to um, let's say uh, map that supply chain triangle to the supply chain ecosystem it's really about well, what's the what's the final service goal in that supply chain ecosystem what's the overall cost in that supply chain ecosystem and what's the overall uh, inventory working capital or capital employed in that supply chain ecosystem and through collaboration we can let's say improve the balance in that uh, triangle because we are different companies, we will need to negotiate on how to split the benefits. And so let's say that in the network, I can reduce the inventory with 10 million euros. Well, there will, uh, there will be a question on one, where are the savings by nature? Because uh, to take the VMI example, most of the savings could be on the supplier side and there could be less savings on the customer side. Well, the overall savings are 10 million. Uh, let's say by nature most of these savings are on the supplier side we will need to kind of find a mechanism to redistribute uh, the profits in a fair way and uh, fair way is not necessarily a 50 50 split it will really depend on the power of the different partners uh, within that supply chain but okay that's how markets work so Depending on the, 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 the balance and the power balance, we will come to a different outcome of that negotiation. Uh, but the good thing is that if we take that ecosystem's perspective and we look at the supply chain uh, ecosystem triangle instead of just our uh, own company-specific uh, supply chain triangle, for sure, we will unlock benefits, we will unlock potential, uh, which can be shared, let's say, through fair negotiation mechanisms. So, that's another thought next to the more strategic aspects uh, which we discussed in the previous blog which we wanted to share on how that supply chain triangle uh, and the strategy map to the supply chain ecosystems which were a hot topic on the Gartner conference uh, in the US last week.